everything or with nothing. And that's exactly what Jesus was driving this point home to this man. Jesus was not rejecting him. He offered him a relationship right there. If he could just remove this out of his life, he could commune with God. And you see, that's exactly what he told Moses. If Moses said, no, i got to have the sandals on. They are very, very important to me. My mama made these sandals for me. And I can't take them off. God would have said, then depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I'm not knowing you. You just missed out on the opportunity to be the messenger of deliverer of Israel because you wanted to keep your shoes. It sounds silly, doesn't it? But that's what that represented. God said, remove your shoes for the ground which you stand is holy. And so Moses like, whoa, whoa, you know. And you get to that. What's that represent? It represents getting things out of the way so that you can commune with God. And if you cannot, you will not commune with God. And if there's something in your life today, friends, that is more important than God, then folks, you cannot commune with God. Amen. It could be money. And for a lot of us it is because of the world we live in. But it could be other things too. It could be your relationships, your choices, your material things, whatever it is. We can name them all off. But you know what I'm talking about. I don't need to. So he drives home the point. The man shows exactly, exactly what's most important to him. The Bible says he walked away very sorrowful for he had great possessions. And you might sit back and judge this young man. But how many times do we get an offer at an invitation time and we walk away wondering, should I have went? I really felt like I should have went, but I didn't go. Why? Because there's a little bit of pride there that said, what if I do go? What's going to happen? What are they going to think? What's going to happen to me? Is he going to lay his hands on me? Is something weird going to happen to me? I mean, those kind of thoughts go through your mind. I know I was there. I had the white knuckle center. I know exactly what it is. You don't get as much on these chairs because they're padded. I remember the pews. I used to grab one too. It's hardwood pews. Now, just like, and we'll get back to Brother Lucas' testimony, which was absolutely awesome. And I love how God's working in his life and that testimony. It's far beyond, far beyond what you can even imagine. We cannot have this testimony just like the foolish virgins in Matthew 25 could not have the oil of the wise virgins. The wise virgins had oil in their lamps and they had oil in reserve. What did that say about them? They were prepared for the Lord's return. And you see, that's why they weren't being stingy. But they didn't have enough. And you see, Lucas, Brother Lucas and Sister Vaughn, our worship leaders, they do not have enough testimony to give and share with you. I don't know if that comes across right or not. That's the best way I know how to share it. You have to have your own testimony. You've got to seek the kingdom of God out and His righteousness for yourself and find out where God would have you. And don't just look at the commandments and say, well, I've got to try to follow all the commandments. Because you'll fail, I promise. But if you, just like these wise virgins, make preparation for Christ's return, they made themselves ready. The foolish ones did not. If you do this, if you make preparation and you come into a relationship with Jesus, with God the Father through Jesus, then, that relationship will flourish as you walk and talk with Him and rest in Him and serve Him and love Him. That when it comes to the subject of giving, you'll totally get it. God will help you bring it to you, that understanding. And it will be so powerful in your life that nothing, nothing will take precedence over it. Amen. It won't matter what else happens around you because you will have faith in God. You'll have faith in the one who stood on that ship and said, Peace be still. Whenever the whole world is going crazy, he's saying, Peace be still. And he has that authority to do that. Who is this man who speaks to this storm the way he did? Now, before you will be faithful in tithing, you need a relationship with the one who commanded it. You see, the commandments that were given 
in Leviticus, and given in Numbers, and even in Exodus, when you read about the, what we call the Mosaic Law, even through De Deuteronomy, there is one key element that you must know. He says, I give these commandments to you to follow with your heart. Yes. And even prophesies and speaks into the future and says there's coming a time where I will not give you tablets of stone, but that what the law will be written on your heart. You'll have tablets on your heart. You'll follow with your heart. I praise God for those of you who were questioning and wondering, asking, what should I do? What should I give? What would make me a faithful tither? And you're wanting to know how much to give and what to give. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for those questions. Please don't think that I am putting that off. But you'll start out well, but you won't finish well unless you have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Amen. And unless you follow Him in that way. Yeah. This is what we must understand. You must have a testimony. You can say, well, that testimony that Brother Lucas gave us last week really impacted me. And I think it did impact all of us. Yes. I, I remember talking over the years with him about the things that he shared with you. But as he brought it in, the one, in one setting, it's like, wow. But you see, God wants to do that in all of you. Amen. You know Amen. Praise God. Amen. He doesn't just respect Lucas, but he does what he sees in Brother Lucas. He says, look, I know now I can trust him. His hands are open, just like he shared last week. His hands are open. I can trust him with more because I know he's not going to be selfish. And I know he's going to obey me because I've already tried him in this. You see, but God wants to do that in all of you. Amen. You see, you're looking at me and you're thinking, well, I just can't. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm not because I've just got too much. You stay focused down here, and it'll always be vanity. Vanity of vanity, everything under the sun is vanity. But once you get your eyes on God, and once you start trusting Him, there's nothing, nothing, nothing too big. Nothing will slow. You need a relationship with the one who commanded these things. Tithing is not a list of rules, but a relationship with God very big part of our relationship with God today because of the world we live in and how it operates. And God is striking at our heart right now, talking to our hearts, saying, what are you going to do with this message? Are you going to reason it away and walk away sorrowful? Or are you going to find a joy? And you see, what God does not want, He does not want you to say, well, I'm just going to give in spite of giving. I'm just going to be angry about it. I'm going to give. You see? You're like, well, how come I'm not getting blessed? I'm giving. Because God loves a cheerful giver. He loves a cheerful giver. You will find the joy in the relationship of giving. You'll find it. But you can't outgive God. You cannot. And it's the awesome thing about it. What I challenge you to do this week, friends, if the Lord wills and you see that you can add to your studies this week, study Malachi chapter 3. Get prepared. Like I said, if the Lord wills and we're still here next week, I'm not going to be a fool and say I'm going to go and do things without saying first the Lord's will. That's what James tells us. We'll talk on Malachi chapter 3 next week. And if you have a relationship with God, through Jesus Christ, you're going to see not what He wants from you, but what He wants to give you. Amen. That's what you'll see. You'll see. But I have to ask this question this morning. I have to offer at this invitation time, are you like this young ruler who came to Jesus and you ask, what do I still lack? Like? What do I still lack? I feel like there's something missing in my life. What do I still lack? What do I need to feel complete? What do I need in my life? And there's a lot of folks asking that question because they're showing their actions. They try to fill that void with a lot of things. And only one way it's going to be filled, and that's through Jesus. 
Remember that game we used to play as a kid, a little shape, little figure things? Star goes in a star, circle goes in a circle, square goes in a square. It didn't fit anything else in there but what it was designed for. Your heart is designed for Jesus to be there. And if you try to fit anything else there, it's kind of like putting a square in a circle hole. It doesn't work. Do you understand? I want to ask you to stand with me this morning. When I offer this time, if you do not have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, it means that you've not repented of your sins and you've not asked Him to save your eternal soul. Not eternal, I'm sorry, immortal. You're not asking to save your immortal soul. Then, I'm offering right now the opportunity as the pastor of this church that God is offering the opportunity as the king of creation to come and commune with him. So as they sing and play, meditate on these things. Listen to what God is saying to you. Maybe there's areas in your life that God needs to work out of you and you need someone to pray for you, whatever it is. This is your time. This is your time.